Finally, here are my thoughts on he whom we have called the most powerful man in the world. First, let me explain the title. The United States, and China for that matter, are more powerful countries than Russia, of course, but the power of a head of state is determined both by the country's strength and the capacity he or she has to exercise that power unilaterally, unconstrained by other institutions, parties, or political forces. And combining those two metrics, it's easy to see why Vladimir Putin rises to the top. He has created what he calls a vertical of power, unlike any we have seen in other great nations. As the Russian chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov has noted, himself a harsh critic of Putin, the entire structure of Russian political authority rests on one man. When the Tsar died, after all, you knew the process by which his successor, his son, would be elevated. When the General Secretary of the Soviet Communist Party died, the Standing Committee and the Politburo would select his successor. But when Putin dies, I almost said if, what will happen? No one knows. To understand Putin, you have to understand Russia. The last hundred years for that country have seen the fall of the Tsar, the collapse of democracy, the Great Depression, World War II with its tens of millions of Russian dead, Stalin's totalitarian brutalities, the collapse of communism, the breakup of the Soviet Union, Boris Yeltsin's years of chaos and corruption, and then comes Vladimir Putin, who ushers in almost two decades of stability and in popular perception, rising standards of living and increasing prominence and respect in the world. Respect is important. Russians have immense national pride. Russia is, after all, the largest country on the planet, 48 times larger than Germany. It encompasses 11 time zones and straddles Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. It is also a rich country, containing some of the largest deposits of raw materials, from oil and natural gas to nickel and aluminum. Culturally, it has often thought of itself as the third Rome, preserving Christianity even as Rome and Byzantium fell to the barbarians. Putin understands Russia, but he also understands the world. He's not foolish enough to make a frontal assault on America or Europe. He knows how to use power asymmetrically with cyber tools and disinformation. He understands the vulnerabilities of free societies, their internal divisions and discord, and their gaping openness. He understands the fragility of institutions like the European Union and NATO, and ideas like integration and diversity. In other words, Vladimir Putin understands us very well. The question is, do we, does Donald Trump, really understand him?